Welcome to another DAP tutorial series. These types of videos are intended to provide a more rational approach to digital audio players, away from the typical hype surrounding audiophile gear. Here, we will explore the new FIO M17. In this 8-part video, we will walk through the M17 functionality. At nearly $2,000, this digital audio player demands close scrutiny, the kind that is often not provided among audiophile circles. Unlike with many other M17 commentary, this is not a review to justify your purchase. This is a nuts and bolts overview of what you can expect from this eye-wateringly expensive device. This series will cover basic information about the player, a walkthrough of the FIO music application, using third-party playback software, importing music files, talking about accessories, how the M17 performs in daily use, and comparing it to some alternatives. In the last chapter, I will briefly discuss my overall experience with the M17 and closing thoughts about such an expensive player. This video will be critical and analytical. While the M17 has some notable features, a thorough breakdown will reveal if it is overhyped or perfectly priced. Lastly, I want to thank Appos Audio for loaning me the M17. As you know, Appos is an online retailer that specializes in a wide assortment of gear. They have excellent customer service, a good return policy, and continue to provide access to all types of opinions, from exuberant praise to those who are very critical. Check out Apple's Audio if you're looking to do business with a reputable retailer. In this initial chapter, we are going to cover basic information about the M17. Here, we will talk about physical design, operating system, storage, battery life, and major features. Without doubt, the M17 has a very imposing design. It is large and heavy. The M17 is 3.5 inches wide, a little over 6 inches tall, and just over about 1 inch thick. It weighs 1.3 pounds. The screen is a large 1080 by 2160 18 by 9 aspect ratio screen. It is approximately 6 inches. FIO does not clearly state this, but this screen is an Incel LCD. FIO also does not indicate which type of in-cell screen this is. AM+, Plus, BQ7, BQ7 Hard, BQ7 Soft, all of which come at different price points, brightnesses, and scratch or break resistance. FIO inserted dual ES9038 Pro DAC chips, which are not new and have been implemented in other devices lower in the price ladder. The M17 comes with a host of connection options. This includes DC power in, two USB-C options, one as a host device and the other as fast charging among other things, coaxial in and out, and four types of headphone outputs, 3.5mm, quarter inch, 4.4mm, and 2.5mm. The M17 has a large volume knob with hard stops. On the right side are the power and the volume up and down buttons. These are all the same size and equidistantly placed. The volume up button has a small raised portion for easier identification. The right side also contains the power mode switch for either battery or DC power. On the left side are the playback controls, again of the same size and equidistant from each other. A fourth button acts as multifunction activation to one of several quick access options, such as adding a track to favorites in the FIO app or switching to USB DAC mode. Finally, there is a hold switch on this side. On both sides are windows for LEDs. I downloaded Display Checker from the Google Play Store. This app verified that the M17 does not have wide color gamut and is not HDR compliant. It also does not support Dolby Vision. There is a teardown video of the M17 on YouTube. If you're interested in getting a real world look inside this player beyond FIO's marketing, this might be worth watching. FIO says in their marketing that the M17 uses liquid cooling. However, this teardown video does not clearly show where the liquid cooling would be placed. At the time of this review, the M17 used Android 10Q. It seems that FIO simply took this OS designed for cellular phones and installed it on the M17. 
For example, the Settings app has an option for Portable Hotspot, which is not possible on this device. As you would expect with minimally altered Android OS, the M17 does let you gain access to developer mode. Using the Dev Info app, we can obtain greater information about this device. For example, while Fio installed 4GB of RAM, Dev Info indicates that 45% of this is used upon start and in idle mode, with no background applications. When the Fio Music app is launched and with music playing, the RAM usage shoots up to about 50%. When Spotify is launched and no other applications other than Dev Info are operating, the RAM usage is 53%. While this might not make much, if any, difference to some, others might find such information useful, especially if they intend to use the M17 for more than just a simple music playback device. The M17 has the Qualcomm Snapdragon 660, which was released in 2019. As mentioned before, the screen is Full HD. However, FIO does not provide any information about the refresh rate. Dev Info analyzed it with a refresh rate of 60Hz, but it is not clear from FIO's specifications if this is locked or variable. As we will discuss later, the screen can appear laggy under normal use. Further, the responsiveness to screen input is less than immediate. FIO does include the option of locking the M17 into player mode only. You can select which mode you want to run the M17 into by activating the pull-down menu and tapping Mode Choose. This will give you the option to keep the device in Android mode, Pure Music mode, USB DAC, Bluetooth Receiving, SPDIF Receiver, or Apple AirPlay. One caveat is that Android is always running in the background even when Pure Music mode is selected. Further, you are locked into Fio's music app and cannot designate a third-party application as your music preference in this mode. When in pure music mode, the pull-down menu is disabled. You still have connection to Wi-Fi, which is useful if you want to utilize the FIO Music app's media server function. To get out of the pure music mode, you have to swipe up from the bottom of the screen. The M17, of course, works as a desktop DAC. The M17 startup time is approximately 20 seconds. Shutdown time is no more than about 5 to 6 seconds. The M17 comes with approximately 43 gigabytes of free internal storage and a total of 64 gigabytes on board. This is quite respectable considering many other digital audio players arrive with far less. Fio says that the M17 will accept micro SD cards with a maximum capacity of 2 terabytes, and this player only has the availability to house one SD card at a time. The M17 has a non-user replaceable 92 milliamp hour battery, which Fio claims has a standby time of 1000 hours and a hopeful maximum output of more than 10 hours with single-ended use while playing low resolution audio. Quick charge is implemented and will theoretically fully charge the battery within four and a half hours. Real-world use with FLAC and other high-resolution audio using various headphones and IEMs will result in far less than 10 hours of battery life with full charge. Expect more an average of 5-6 to six hours with constant playback while using a few applications. You can review Fio's website for all their touted features. Here, I would like to highlight the major ones. The M17 is Rune ready. This means that if you have a Rune core device, the M17 will act as an endpoint, letting you stream the Rune catalog to the M17. Unfortunately, Fio's manual does not even mention Rune, let alone how to connect it to your Rune system. You will need to check Rune's forums for guidance. As of firmware version 1.0.6, Fio has a Rune app that automatically installs onto your Android desktop, so look for that if you upgrade. The M17 also has Apple AirPlay compatibility. The manual does discuss how to connect in this way, so you should review it for step-by-step -step instructions. The M17 has bi-directional Bluetooth. This means you can send Bluetooth to the M17 and it can send Bluetooth to wireless headphones. However, it does not appear that you can do both at the same time. As discussed previously, this player has several headphone output options. On top of that, it also supports coaxial input and output. Fio includes two USB connections. The blue USB 3.0 port is multifunctional. It will let you charge the battery, transfer data, act as USB DAC connection, and will let you use it as the USB output to another DAC. The second USB connection is limited. Fio calls it a host port, and we will talk about this a little bit more later. 
You do not need to use the FIO Music app for USB audio output. Any app on this device will be able to send USB signal out through the host port. The M17's purported power output is quite high, especially for low impedance headphones. The maximum potential is 1.5 watts at 16 ohms, 3 watts at 32 ohms, and 500 milliwatts at 300 ohms. But these excessive numbers can only be achieved when the M17 is connected to DC power. FIO claims they adopted a liquid cooling system into the chassis. They do not provide much details, but it seems that this cooling system is designed principally to help dissipate heat generated from DC power and the enhanced headphone output that combination unlocks. Unfortunately, the liquid cooling is passive. The M17 does not have any internal fans, which means you should use the M17 with its fan accessory if connected to DC. In this section, we will briefly discuss the FIO Music app. FIO's manual dedicates some time to the functions in their application, so for additional input, I suggest you review it. Overall, the Music app is the same as the one you can download for any compatible Android device. It just comes pre-installed on the M17. Compared to the FIO Music app on the LG V30, there does not seem to be any obvious visual differences. The app provides all the expected functionality. This includes playing local high-res music, a 10-band EQ, tagging tracks, and deleting tracks. The app has a visual audio meter mode. To enable it, tap the song cover art when playing music. You can also activate a visual spectrum mode when playing music. This has to be done within the settings section of the music app. Go to theme, now playing, then select spectrum display. The FIO music app will display lyrics if they have been transferred along with your music files. The app's playback page does provide clear information and large, obvious, soft buttons for music control. Dead center, you will see the file format, sample rate, bit depth, and playback quality. Just below that, you'll see the album name and large playback controls. One of the aspects that might be useful for those who have very large libraries is the FIO app's ability to search within your content. If you tap on the three dots on the top right corner, you'll get a submenu. Within this submenu is the option to search across all folders for any keyword embedded in the content or the title. You'll also have access to check the track info for the track that is currently playing. By delving into track info, you'll see exactly where a particular track is stored. If you go to the homepage of the FIO Music app, you'll see the most recent 100 tracks that have been played along with the track that is currently playing. If you click on the settings icon on the top left, you'll have access to several items. You can change the background, choosing among several presets. You can also add your own background from a file you've stored on the player. You can transfer music from your computer to the M17 via Wi-Fi music transfer. Assuming you find the URL, you should also tap on the settings icon on the top right to select the folder where you want the music transferred to. The app settings menu gives you the access to what FIO calls lab features, essentially features that are not fully baked. Here, you will have the option to turn on DLNA transmission. FIO's FAQ has minimal information regarding this, but you should check it out. The other lab feature is PEQ, which will replace the EQ option within the FIO music player. If you compare FIO's PEQ and EQ, there is very little difference. You get the same band to adjust, from 31Hz to 16kHz. The only thing that the PEQ seems to add to the M17 is a separate gain adjustment which applies globally to the output. Ultimately, if you have used FIO's music app before, then it should be very familiar here. Unfortunately, FIO's app does not have any DSP functions, of the type that you will find on Sony's flagship players. The FIO app's EQ preset list is quite limited when compared to what you might get on Cowan players as well. In this section, we are going to talk about third-party app support. As an Android music player, the M17 supports all Android applications. This means you can download YouTube, Spotify, Tidal, and any other program you might otherwise install on an Android phone or tablet. This opens the M17 to a multitude of music playback software, any of which might be more suitable than the FIO Music app. There are a few caveats about using applications on the M17. The first is the total available storage. While you have nearly 50 gigabytes at your disposal initially, downloading videos or large high-resolution files will quickly deplete the onboard storage. 
This is where dual micro SD card slots would have been useful, as one could be used for applications and the other for music. The second caveat is the smooth operation of some of the applications. For example, when surfing on Google Chrome or browsing video lists in YouTube, there is obvious stuttering when scrolling through content. This also applies to some other music playback software, such as Spotify. In this section, we will briefly discuss importing music files onto the M17. The first and most obvious way of getting music onto the M17 is by having the SD card preloaded, but this presents an annoyance for some. FIO typically uses a locked SD card slot, which requires an SD card pin to open. FIO does include one of these in the box, but these items are easily lost because of their small size. Alternatively, you can connect the M17 through its blue USB-C port and transfer music onto the SD card. Windows should automatically see the M17 and its storage. Macs will need the Android file transfer software, which is free. FIO's online FAQ says the USB can be used to connect to external hard drives. However, FIO's manual does not mention this. Instead, FIO says in the manual that the USB ports are used for data transfer from a computer or for DAC mode or for charging. Although FIO is not clear about this, you can in fact connect some external drives to the M17. A small SSD like my Crucial X6 could not connect and would not receive any power from the M17. But a simple thumb drive did connect to the M17 through both USB ports. If you can connect to an external drive, then transferring content to the M17 is like doing so on any other Android device. I will highlight that FIO's FAQ on this matter is clearly incomplete. The FIO Music app will have access to any connected external drives. Of course, this does not make much sense as the point of a digital audio player is for it to hold your music internally. You can transfer data from external drives to the M17 using the Android file management software. If you store your music in the cloud, then you can set up the M17 to keep your content updated when connected to the internet. For example, if you store music in Dropbox, you can download the Dropbox app onto the M17, direct which folder to store the content, then point your music playback software of choice to that Dropbox folder. In this way, any changes you make to Dropbox will trickle down to the M17 when connected to Wi-Fi. The bottom line is that the M17 has a number of ways to access your content. In this section, we are going to briefly discuss the accessories available to you for the M17. When you purchase the M17, you will receive with the player several accessories. This includes a micro SD card ejector pin, USB cables, DC power adapter, a leather case, and a cooling stand for use on a desk. The leather case has a metal mesh on the back, which is useful for some airflow. The case allows free access to all the ports, as well as the SD card slot. The case is form-fitting. While Fio says this is made of leather, some might not consider it nearly as premium feeling as they might want. The cooling stand is made of aluminum and can be used with any device, really. The fan is essentially a single PC radiator fan that blows air inwards towards the player resting on top. The fan requires USB power. The M17 can power this fan through its blue USB-C port. The fan is loud enough to be heard on low and particularly on high. There are currently no third-party accessories specifically for the M17. Considering the niche audience for this player, it seems unlikely there will be many accessories by alternative manufacturers. In this section, we will briefly talk about real-world use with the M17. My perspective is not one of wide-eyed and awed audiophile, but instead someone being very cautious about spending nearly $2,000 on a music playback device. If you have used an Android device, whether a phone or tablet, then the M17 will be familiar. There's barely any noticeable alteration to the operating system. The pull-down menu gives you quick access to some of the DAP functions, such as output, gain, and one of the several modes. However, anything I can install on my LG V30, I can install on the M17. The response of the M17 is generally quick. Navigating between desktop pages is fairly smooth. Navigating through the app library is easy. Searching for files and data is, again, typical of Android devices. 
things are less impressive whenever the M17 is forced to display photos or videos. You can see obvious ghosting on the screen when navigating through the YouTube homepage without even playing any videos. The ghosting is similarly obvious when scrolling through the FIO music app, Spotify, Amazon Music, and other programs. There's also a lag in response. Flicking up and down on the screen always results in a perceptible hesitation in the M17 registering the commands and then responding. While this slow response is not necessarily a significant issue, the ghosting can become irritating. If you have lots of albums or tracks, scrolling through them might cause strain because of this ghosting problem. In the basic information section of this video, I mentioned that DevInfo says that the M17 has 60Hz refresh rate. I asked my Appos audio contact person to reach out to Fio for confirmation. Through this conversation, I learned that while the M17 is supposed to have 60Hz, Fio says that it's more like a fluctuation between 58 and 60Hz. I compared the M17 against my LG V30. This phone was released in 2017, uses a Snapdragon 835 with 4GB of RAM, and has Android 9. It also has 60Hz refresh rate. When I compare the V30 against the M17, it is patently obvious that the former has a faster, smoother response without the ghosting apparent on the M17. Using the same apps and websites, the V30 is simply more capable in this regard. Even more glaring is that the LG V60, which is among the last phones LG created, has a higher refresh rate than both the V30 and the $2000 M17. When I made a few posts about this issue on the M17, some people commented that this should not be a deal breaker as the M17 is a pure music player and its visual or streaming capabilities should not be overemphasized. I understand that some people can rationalize the M17's response rate, but it seems a bit disingenuous to excuse the performance, which I have to say seems a little bit lackluster. In fact, throughout my time with the M17, whether used as a mobile device or plugged into its DC power on my desk, it always seemed a little bit slow. I got the impression that either the OS was not optimized for whatever FIO did to modify it, or the hardware for some strange reason was being throttled. The throttling hypothesis doesn't really make much sense, as DevInfo says that the 660's cores are running typically over 1900 MHz. When you look at DevInfo's CPU snapshot, you see that the Snapdragon 660 in the M17 has a frequency range between 634 and 22 MHz. This suggests that while doing absolutely nothing, with only DevInfo running in the background, the M17 is nearly maxing out its cores all the time, on all the cores. Compared to the LG V30, its 835 CPU has a frequency range between 300 and 2450 MHz. Without any background apps, DevInfo says that the V30 CPU is sitting between 500 and 800 MHz depending on which core is being utilized. When the FIO app is playing and only DevInfo in the background monitoring the hardware, there's no apparent change in CPU frequency on the M17. When music is paused, the M17 screen is off and the player is allowed to sit idle for several minutes, it appears that the CPU cranks down to near minimal speeds. I confirmed this by stopping the FIO music app from playing and putting the device in sleep or rest for several moments. When I turned the screen back on and went directly to DevInfo, I noticed that the CPU had come down quite a bit. Unfortunately, I couldn't replicate this for the video. Every single time I tried to repeat what I had previously found, DevInfo kept showing the same 1900 MHz number. And I repeated this after restart after restart. All of this indicates that the 660 processor in the M17 is always working at near maximum, which doesn't make much sense. I'm sure many of you know this already, but in case someone doesn't, the M17 CPU performance is not overclocking. The CPU seems to be performing within its speed threshold, but always near its maximum. Power not being a factor, I would think that having a CPU perform at its fastest all the time might not be a bad thing, but the M17 sluggish performance seems to negate this possibility. The reason I bring all this up is because among the M17's hype and overflowing praise, it seems as if its user interaction is left as a distant tertiary concern. I don't think that should be the case. 
When spending nearly $2,000 on an Android device, we really should get performance that is at least on par with a discontinued phone from 2017. If, on the other hand, you can ignore this problem on the M17, then I'm sure you can find good reasons to enjoy this device. After all, it does provide an overwhelming amount of power when plugged into DC. Even in mobile mode, the M17 has more power than the vast majority of headphones would ever need. The ability to download any Android app, change to a different music player, or enjoy streaming content is always a plus. But this brings us to another issue I found. In pure music mode, the M17 locks you into the Fio Music app. If you're happy with this software, then that's not a problem. If, however, you prefer using something else, then you're out of luck. I delved through the settings and could not find any way of forcing a different application to pop up when in pure music mode. This seems like a peculiar limitation. After all, Android is still running in the background in this mode, and there should be no technical reason why the M17 can't run Hibi Music or USB Audio Player or AIMP. In fact, why can't the M17 let streaming apps like Amazon Music or Spotify or Tidal run instead of Fio Music while in pure music mode? Fio claims that while in pure music mode, there's a change in Android's quote, storage managing and app scheduling. They go on and say that quote, naturally it will also affect the playback of the music app. Therefore, the sound performance will be different, but the difference is so slight that not everyone can tell it. I'm not sure how storage managing and app scheduling affects sound performance. Fio does not provide any explanation as to how pure music mode affects its application or in what way the sound is enhanced. I never experienced anything noticeably different between Android and pure music mode while playing music. If there is some kind of improvement by going into pure music mode, then why not just create a player with locked down Android or proprietary OS? I'm sure some people will like the fact that you do have the option to toggle between full Android and, well, only Fio Music, but if the experience is somehow better without Android, then why implement Android at all? The big elephant in the room, obviously, is the M17. It is heavy, beefy, and eye-catching. It is by no stretch of the imagination portable in the same sense as a phone or most other DAPs. Of course, it is also not the behemoth that is the QLS QA390, but that's a different subject. It was always difficult to find ways to use the M17 in at least a semi-portable way. It won't fit in my pockets, and even if I could find pants with huge pockets, the weight of the M17 would make me look like I'm reenacting 90s hip-hop videos. The alternative is to wear a backpack to carry the M17, but if I do that, I have to bring a headphone or IEM cable that's long enough to reach. And, of course, I can't control the music that way. This brings us to the obvious physical limitation of the M17, something that very much affects not just how you use it, but also where. In my view, the M17 is portable in the same sense that you can pick it up from one desktop so that you can carry it to another desktop. The journey between desks might not be so full of music enjoyment. Yes, the M17 has its vehicle mode, wherein you plug it from its USB 3.0 port into your car's USB aux. But where exactly are you going to place such a large device in your car? Put it on the passenger seat and watch it fly into the dashboard if you slam the brakes. You could keep it in the cup holder as long as you don't intend on bringing your coffee. Of course, don't forget that the USB is on the bottom, so if you put the M17 in the cup holder, you'll have to place it upside down to not damage the cable or the port. As I used the M17, I kept wondering why its ecosystem doesn't have the ability to run passive speakers. That would have differentiated this device from anything else above or below its price tag. The physical and technical limitations inside the M17 is the clear answer why the player can't drive passive speakers. However, why not put this ability into passive speaker driving on the M17's desktop stand? To me, it seems like a missed opportunity. I never had any difficulty running any number of my headphones or IEMs off the M17. Whether in the so-called portable mode or connected to DC power, the M17 always provided overwhelming power for my gear. I just cannot imagine any available headphone that requires 3 watts, irrespective of what some audiophiles claim. 
planar, dynamic, it doesn't matter, the M17 can drive them. Ultimately, my time with the M17 was fairly pleasant. After getting past its imposing size, the M17 performed reasonably well. I never had an eye-opening experience where it comes to music, and you'll read or hear plenty of praise that contradicts my view on this. Sadly, the nagging problem with the M17 is its sluggish response and display refresh rate. I just could not rationalize the discrepancy I witnessed, where my 5-year-old LG V30 with screen burn had better response than Fio's flagship DAP. In this section, we will do some quick comparisons between the M17 and some competitors. These comparisons are meant to show the UI differences, response, and overall usability of the individual products. You can and should look at each device's specifications if you're interested in getting more information. I believe that true A-B tests are imperative when comparing products, and that's what I intended to do here. I put the same music files on two microSD cards. I put one of these cards in the comparative products and use their stock music player applications. I then plugged their single-ended output into a passive AB switch and used easy-to-drive IEMs and headphones for listening comparisons between the M17 and its rivals. I used the Campfire Audio Andromeda, Rode and TH100, and the Austrian Audio hi X55 as my testing gear. I played the tracks at the same time and volume matched using my decibel meter. I compared the M17 against the Fio M15, Ibasso DX160 from 2020, Ibasso DX220, KN N6 Mark II, Sony NWA55, Cowan P2, Astral and Kern Con Cube, Astral and Kern SA700, and the Low 2 Paw 6000. All of these devices were updated to their latest firmware. The M15 was the big player for a little while until the M17 came around. While the two have different CPUs and RAM implementation, the overall navigation and usability is very similar. Actually, while not a night and day difference, the M15 has slightly faster refresh rate or response compared to the M17 in real-world use. The ghosting apparent on the M17 is not apparent on the M15. As for music quality, there is not a lick of difference. Volume matched, you can't tell one from the other, and I'd wager anyone who did a true, reliable, blind A-B comparison would guess no better than random chance would allow. The DX160 presents a lockdown version of Android requiring APK Pure to sideload applications. The navigation and user experience is noticeably better on the M17. The DX160's hardware is clearly not optimized for Android, even the locked version it uses. Ibasso has their own music player, which they call Mango, for some very stupid reason. The difference in sound quality between the two players is very, very minimal. The M17 has a slight bit of clarity that the DX160 doesn't replicate. This typically is found in separation among elements in a mix, but it is not night and day. And quite frankly, it might just be due to not properly volume matching. Then there's the Ibasso DX220, using the AMP9 module. User experience, navigation, and OS performance is definitely better than that of the DX160. The M17 does have smoother operation than the DX220, but the ghosting apparent on it is not replicated on the DX220. As for sound quality, not a lick of difference between them when volume matched. The KN N6 Mark II with its T1 module using a lockdown version of Android and a lesser CPU is as speedy as the M17. There's also no ghosting issue on the N6. Using heavy music on the N6, I compared the sound performance. There's a very slight difference in bass. The N6 has a marginally slower bass decay and slower transients. Vocal clarity is also ever so slightly more apparent on the M17. Do a blind test, and chances are you won't really care. The A55 is a perfect example of hardware and software synergy. Not only is the A55 snappy, it is simple to operate. It exhibits no screen ghosting. Comparing the A55 sound to the M17 with no DSP applied on the A55, there are no audible differences whatsoever. Turn on DSP, and the experience is very different. The Cowan P2 shares the A55's proprietary software and hardware integration, but only in a worse way. 
all Cowan players are sluggish and slow, and the P2 makes the M17's performance into a sports car. On the other hand, there is no difference at all in sound quality between the two. What does make a big difference is the P2's EQ presets, which vastly outnumber that of the M17's. The Jet Effect DSP or EQ in Cowan players is unique and outclasses in this regard any other DAP I have ever used. The Con Cube is yet another excellent example of hardware and software synergy. It is quick, responsive, and its screen does not display the ghosting apparent on the M17. Comparing the music in an AB setup, there's no difference at all in presentation or clarity or chocolatey velvetness. The SA700, as you might imagine, has the same interface and user experience as the Con Cube. It is smooth and easy to navigate. Once again, just as with the Con Cube, the SA700 had no audible differences in sound quality or presentation compared to the M17. Finally, there's the PAW 6000. This, just as with the Sony and Astro and current players, shows what hardware and software synergy can do. Of all the DAPs tested here, the 6000 had the fastest, smoothest operation. Its user interface is also the simplest of them all. And while it's like a broken record, I have to say, there's no difference at all between the PAW 6000 and M17 when it comes to audio quality. Ultimately, it is rare that these types of DAPs have the huge differences some audiophiles claim. It's fascinating how many transparent reference class DAPs have different sound reproduction. Every new DAP, especially expensive ones, apparently have better sound quality than the one before. I think if you do a true A-B test, the gushing praise DAPs tend to get might just get watered down. My opinions about audiophile gear is regularly different from the typical reviewer or audiophile. And why not? I've spent far too much money on headphones, IEMs, DACs, amps, and DAPs to follow the trend. I've committed to doing more analytical reviews and being more analytical and less emotional usually doesn't result in gushing praise. I've made plenty of mistakes in this hobby and learned that no other pastime has as much snake oil as audiophilia. When I look at the M17, I see a product that is not remotely value. When the majority of audiophiles have a tough time affording $500 headphones, a DAP which costs four times that is a pipe dream. So if you think I'm going to tell you to save your money to buy the M17, you're going to be disappointed. The M17, as a player, is a perfectly good product. Download whatever Android app you want, stream any content you wish, connect to AirPlay or Rune, and enjoy your headphones and IMs with maximum power. This behemoth has lots to offer. But its target market is not the average person. It's those who have spare cash burning a hole in their pockets, or those who need to launder money from the IRS for next year's tax filings. Sadly, while I wish I could say that the $2,000 price tag is justified, I can't. This is particularly the case when there are some glaring issues that, at least to me, make the M17 a difficult prospect to recommend even to those who have the money to spend. First, as I've said repeatedly, the M17's performance is lackluster. Why is the CPU running at near maximum when the player isn't doing anything at all? Why is half the allotted RAM unusable just by turning the player on? Well, the M17 is not optimized for Android. I'm not particularly bothered by the older CPU in the M17. That doesn't make any difference, as we have DAPs with slow processors that perform really well. But those DAPs also use heavily modified Android or proprietary OS to get the most out of the hardware. Some people might balk at this criticism, and if you feel that it doesn't make any difference to you, then you really should enjoy the M17. But not everybody thinks the same. And when this DAP costs nearly double that of premium, flagship smartphones, it's things like screen refresh rate, smooth operation and navigation, and overall usability that become that much more important. I can forgive the sluggishness of the FIO M3 Pro, which at under $100 is a true bargain, but the M17 is a different story. Then there's the issue of power output. Lots of people were enamored by the 3 watt number FIO marketed. But the catch is that you have to be on DC power to get this astonishing performance, assuming that's something this player actually outputs 
under the best of circumstances. What headphones actually need that much power? Surely it's not many. I think Fio missed an opportunity with the cooling stand. If it had the ability to power passive speakers and had an RCA connection for active speakers, then the M17 might offer something truly unique. In that case, this could have been the portable transport that Cord tried to pretend the Mojo is. Another problem for the future is the M17's battery. It's no secret that batteries degrade over time based on usage and how you recharge them. I've already posted about my experience with the BTR7's degraded battery, and you can just imagine how frustrated someone might become when they discover that the M17 doesn't hold charge as it used to. Unfortunately, the M17 doesn't have replaceable batteries. With a player this large, wouldn't it have made sense to just let it be a little bit larger if you could have user replaceable battery packs? Again, this would have made the M17 very unique. I asked my Apple's audio contact person to reach out to Fio about replacing degraded or faulty batteries. We discovered that Fio only offers their standard one-year warranty with the M17. When that warranty period is up, what then? If your battery starts failing 18 months down the line, Fio apparently has no policy about taking care of it. To me, all of these issues should be closely examined by both the prospective buyer and Fio. Ultimately, while the M17 is a fine digital audio player in the simplest sense, it's got some issues that to some will be deal breakers. Others will find personal reasons to buy this product and I'm sure they'll enjoy it. Whatever decision you make with any piece of gear, just do your homework thoroughly.